May God be with you. Good morning and welcome to worship at Mount Olivet Lutheran Church of Plymouth. Uh, It is great to see your faces and it is great to see your faces. Uh, For those who are online, wherever this finds you today, we don't very often compete with the Minnesota Vikings at the 9 a.m. service on a Sunday. Uh, But Jack just told me uh, we're up seven to zero, just in case anybody's wondering. Um, But we are glad you are with us today. If you're visiting, um, a warm welcome to you. We always say the best way to get to know us here at Mount Olivet is to engage in worship. And we trust that God's living spirit somehow always, as promised, speaks and we gather in community because we need each other. And this fall, we're just celebrating the fact that we are back together and we're asking simple questions. And this week again, uh, the question is, where does it hurt? We don't often uh, speak our lament, um, what is really going on inside that we often can't see from the outside. And Pastor Kristen is gonna take us into a gospel text that has a couple different stories woven into it to dwell with that question today. And so we do that together and God promises to show up and we're grateful for that. Uh, We are taking time to make sure we know each other. So if you haven't already uh, created a name tag, there's little baskets in the pews for you to do that. So you can look people in the faces and be able to uh, know their names as well. So I invite you as you are able Uh, to stand as we begin our call to worship. Here in this space, we wear our hearts on our sleeves. There's no use for filters or walls. This space is an authentic space. We are always invited to bring our full selves into the room. Come into this space with your hurt and your joy, your prayers and your dreams. All are welcome here. Spirit of life, gather us together as the body of Christ. Amen. If we were to call confession by another name, we could call it a moment to pause, to reflect, and to be honest about the places we want to grow and the way we need God's help. Dear community, together let's acknowledge our failure to love this world as God does. God of mercy and forgiveness, we confess that sin still has a hold on us. We have harmed your good creation. We have failed to do justice, love kindness, and walk humbly with you. Turn us in a new direction. Show us the path that leads to life. Be our refuge and strength on the journey through Jesus Christ, whose saving grace is for all. Amen. God shows us how to love one another and extends grace to us when we fail to do so. So hear and believe the good news of the gospel. We are seen and heard. We are loved and forgiven. Thanks be to God for a love like that. Amen. We sing together.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. And for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Let us pray together. Gracious God, as we listen to stories of those who have known hurt, we are reminded of the hurt we and others carry into this space. Dust off our ears and stretch open our hearts that we might lean into one another as we lean into you. Amen. The word this morning is from the fifth chapter of Mark. <clears throat> when Jesus had crossed again in the boat to the other side, a great crowd gathered round him, and he was by the lake. Then one of the leaders of the synagogue named Jairus came, and when he saw him, fell at his feet and begged him repeatedly, My little daughter is at the point of death. 
Come and lay your hands on her so that she may be made well and live. So he went with him. And a large crowd followed him and pressed in on him. Now there was a woman who had been suffering from hemorrhages for 12 years. She had endured much under many physicians and had spent all that she had, and she was no better, but rather grew worse. She had heard about Jesus and came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak. For she said, If I but touch his clothes, I will be made well. Immediately her hemorrhage stopped, and she felt in her body that she was healed of her disease. Immediately aware that power had gone forth from him, Jesus turned about in the crowd and said, Who touched my clothes? And his disciples said to him, You see the crowd pressing in on you. How can you say, Who touched me? He looked all around to see who had done it. But the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came in fear and trembling, fell down before him and told him the whole truth. He said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your disease. While he was still speaking, some people came from the leader's house to say, Your daughter is dead. Why trouble the teacher any further? But overhearing, overhearing what they said, Jesus said to the leader of the synagogue, Do not fear, only believe. He allowed no one to follow him except Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. When they came to the house of the leader of the synagogue, he saw a commotion, people weeping and wailing loudly. When he had entered, he said to them, Why do you make a commotion and weep? The child is not dead, but sleeping. And they laughed at him. Then he put them all outside and took the child's father and mother and those who were with him and went in where the child was. He took her by the hand and said to her, Talitha kum, which means, little girl, get up. And immediately the girl got up and began to walk about. She was 12 years of age. At this they were overcome with amazement. He strictly ordered them that no one should know this and told them to give her something to eat. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Be seated. Good morning. Several years ago, I was going about my busy day when I locked eyes with a colleague who was passing by. Normally I might have said just a quick hello and moved on, but this time for whatever reason I looked into her eyes and asked her if something was wrong. She burst into tears saying, my body won't stop bleeding and I don't know what else to do. I saw in her eyes the physical pain she was experiencing, her fear over not being able to control what was happening in her body, and even her shame and embarrassment as she accepted my help to gather her things and get to care. As I read our text, I couldn't help but be reminded of that day, not only because my colleague was indeed bleeding, just like the unnamed woman in our story, but also as I reflected on what can happen when you allow yourself to be interrupted by another. I wish I could say the art of interruption was one of my spiritual gifts. Sadly, as an achiever type, it's not. But this new vocation as your pastor is helping me a little bit with that. The power of interruption, the power of stopping whatever you're doing and pausing to take notice of those around you. The power of putting aside that to-do list, whether it's on paper 
or it's lodged into your mind and allowing the day to be rearranged by another. The power of creating space in our busy lives for questions like, where are you from and where does it hurt? The thing is that in our culture, interruptions don't always feel helpful or practical most of the time. And so I am captivated by the Jesus in our story today who allows himself to be interrupted. He isn't just on his way to the grocery store or the bank or the cleaners. He's literally been summoned to go to a powerful man's dying daughter. This is the most emergent of emergent situations. He is on his way to save her, and yet when he feels someone in the crowd touch his robe in a certain way, he pauses to find her. Her story doesn't end with the healing of physical symptoms that she experienced, but continues with Jesus' posture of presence for her, his posture of listening, his posture of seeking to know her whole story and her whole truth. He just insists on this intentional, personal contact with the woman. We can almost imagine Jesus asking her our guiding question for today, woman, where does it hurt? I wonder what it must have been like for her. For 12 years, the woman lived on the margins of society because of her condition. For 12 years, she was considered ritually unclean. She was poor, she was powerless, She had no community. Her restoration required more than just a healing of her physical symptoms, and Jesus was present to listen to her whole truth and to bring her back into the fold of his family. Daughter, he calls her in the end. And only then does Jesus move on with his day. Only then does Jesus attend to what was supposed to be first on his to-do list, raising up of a little girl from death. Jesus' healing seems to know no boundaries, not the boundaries we as humans like to create anyway. Talitha kum, Jesus says to Jairus' dead daughter, which means little girl, get up. And immediately she does, getting up to walk about as if nothing has happened. I sometimes wonder how on earth this story could be a balm for those who have lost their own children. Ron Frainer shared so beautifully and vulnerably about his son last week. And many of you I know, whether you're sitting here in the pews today or you are online, you have experienced this kind of deep heartbreak and loss. Oh, what we wouldn't give to have seen Jesus miraculously show up on the spot in the midst of each and every one of these tragedies and say to our loved ones, child of God, get up. And so in our prayers, we continue to pray for the miracle of physical healing. And yet our text today reveals another miracle that Jesus interrupts even the clearest boundary we experience as humans, and that is of death. And so when the leader of the synagogue despairs over his daughter who has died, Jesus simply says, do not fear, but believe. That's the promise of our faith 
that we are ever drawn into, of course, do not fear, but believe. Believe that healing and restoration and wholeness and peace will come to all the places that hurt and to all of us, even in death. Believe that Jesus moves toward us no matter where we are and brings us back into God's family. Every time Jesus is interrupted during his day, he has a chance to hear someone's whole truth, and then he has the chance to reveal that we belong to him always, and that is his whole truth. If you think about it, Jesus' whole ministry is built around a series of interruptions. He gets interrupted when he's praying. He gets interrupted when he's preaching in the synagogue. He gets interrupted by soldiers and beggars and mother-in-laws and children and his own disciples, and of course, by people who are suffering like those in today's text. As I walked into the church early this morning after a week away on a mission to get everything ready, I too felt interrupted by what I saw written on the windows in in response to the question, where does it hurt? I read the words in front of me, divorce, loneliness, political divisiveness, war, work stress, homophobia, anxiety, grief, unresolved abuse, loss and change in the church, and more. Add to it the interrupting news from Florida and the death and injury and flooding and physical devastation from the hurricane. And I was reminded that the hemorrhaging woman in our story today is us. These hurts are not shameful, but something that we all experience in different ways. And I wonder, what could happen in our world if we all stopped to listen like Jesus? Some of you know that I'm a bit of a political junkie. Uh, My idea of a wonderful date with my husband on a Friday night consists of watching the PBS NewsHour, followed by Almanac, followed by Washington Week. I think all of those have a viewership of about 30. (laughs) A few weeks ago, I was on my own with the kids, and it took me from 6 p.m. to 11.30 p.m. to make it through one recording of the nightly news. I was interrupted at every turn by questions about homework, whimpering about the taking of showers, prolonged bedtime escapades. But along with being your pastor, that's my vocation too, being a mom. Henry Nouwen, the Dutch Catholic priest, professor, and writer once remarked, You know, my whole life I've been complaining that my work was constantly interrupted until I discovered that my interruptions were my work. Let your faith guide you into the work this week, dear ones. Allow yourself to be interrupted by the touch or the face or the hurt of another. See what kind of healing can come from your very presence and the spirit of Jesus that most certainly lives within you. Amen. Please stand as we sing.
This fall, we are embodying sharing of peace uh, to actually be in conversation with each other. That is the way we get to know each other. So um, in light of Pastor Kristen's sermon today, I think this is um, the interruption in the service. And that interruption is finding someone who you may not know and um, introducing yourself, hearing from them, asking some simple questions. And so we have two questions for you uh, to consider today. The first is describe a time when you have felt fully seen and accepted for who you are. Or the second is share a time when you have witnessed or have been a part of someone else's grief or pain. So I invite you now uh, to look around, find someone uh, that you can meet. Um, if you don't want to move from where you are, that is just fine. I trust that someone will come and find you. We'll spend five minutes getting to know each other a little bit more around these questions. And so I invite us now to connect with each other in curiosity. If you are online, we want to connect with you also. So feel free to jot your answers in the comments and uh, we will have Angela engage with you online.
effort to get people back in their seats after our talk time. Grateful for the good conversations and the opportunity to connect and meet each other. Um, and now uh, the choir will lead us in our offering. You will see in your bulletin that little scan code um, if you'd like to give online to Mount Olivet. There's also a basket up front in a box in the back for your offering for all the ways that your financial gifts and your presence really embody and lean into the future of what is going on here at Mount Olivet. We're so deeply grateful for that. We pray together over our offerings today. God of abundance, accept the gifts we give this morning. Accept our voices raised in song and prayer. Accept our gifts of time and talent to further your peace and justice. Accept our gifts of money, for all that we have comes from you. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. 
It is indeed right our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join in their unending hymn. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, broke it, and gave thanks, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this. For the remembrance of me gathered by the spirit now we pray together our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. You are all invited and welcome to this meal wherever you are on your faith journey. And if you think about this, this meal is an interruption. On the path to Jesus' death, he says, time out, gathers his disciples together, in an upper room around wine and bread with betrayal and fear and doubt sitting at the table and says, take and eat the regularness of bread and wine and know that I will be there. So as you are on your journey of faith for all the things that take you off course, for the things that come that you don't expect, God comes with nourishment for our body, our minds, and our spirits to lead us forth in this world to embody that same care and love in all the interruptions of life. Your invitation is simply open your hands to receive this gift of grace that comes to you. If you are online, the promise finds you where you are. The body of Christ is given for you and the blood of Christ shed for you. Here at Mount Olivet, the wafers are gluten-free and the wine is red and the grape juice is lighter in color. Please come forward now. The feast is prepared.
And now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. So we have been forgiven, have uh, heard God's word speaking into our world and into our lives, and we have been fed. And uh, with that grace that comes to us, we pray. That is what it means to be in relationship with God and one another, to speak the things in our life where we are calling God to come close and also speaking those places uh, to let others know what's going on in our lives. And so maybe prayer, in a way, is an interruption as well. Uh, but for those of us feeling alone, like we're just on a journey uh, with no help in sight, to have another come close to us and know that they're praying for us. So I will start us off. If you are online, I invite you to type your comments in now, and we will read your prayers along with those prayers that we have as we gather. Simply just raise your hand, name your prayer, and your community will pray for you. So let's pray. God, um, for how our stories are interwoven, and today in the Gospel of Mark, um, a desperate dad, a leader of the church, for his daughter who's dying. And as Jesus makes his way to be interrupted by an unknown woman who has been bleeding for so many years with some kind of faith to trust that if she could get close and just touch Jesus' cloak, that she would be made well. For the story that she needed to tell of her suffering and her healing and for how Jesus makes time, even in the midst of that interruption, for continued healing. God, we find our place in these stories somewhere. 
and what you promise is your presence is here and now, and you also empower us with that same healing. So with that vulnerability and that little bit of faith, we speak the places where we are calling you to be. Help us find our way there as well. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Uh, for those who are here in church, what prayers do you have today? Yeah, John. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, John speaks prayers for Florida. I have a sense each of us has a connection to a family um, or to a situation there um, in the midst of devastation of a natural disaster. Um, God, uh, for people who have died, uh, for communities that um, are no longer, uh, for rebuilding and restoration, uh, for us to look up from our own lives sometimes to the needs of others, for all the way that that care and that rebuilding will come in, um, in human care and for community care, we pray, God, God in your mercy. Yeah, Ruth. Mm. Yeah, but, uh, yeah, so Ruth and Ben praying for Jeannie, your daughter, and son-in-law Marcus uh, not feeling well, uh, kind of some ongoing sickness. Um, pray for healing in the midst of that for your family, for all the ways that their love touches you as well, uh, for them uh, to recover and feel better and heal. God, we pray. God, in your mercy. Christy. Mm. Yeah. 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 Um, so Christy is praying her husband Dan um, died earlier and was buried in our Mount Olivet Cemetery yesterday. Um, on a beautiful fall morning, we spoke the promise of God's love to Dan in this life and the next. And um, for that promise to interrupt your grief, Christy, for your family that gathered around and your community here at Mount Olivet, um, for this promise of God that death is not the end. Uh, but being on this side of life, that means that the dailiness of your life is forever changed and is changed but Christy, for your faith as well, each and every day, uh, for that love that comes and finds you and for the way that you illuminate that love in your presence, uh, we give thanks for that as well. God, in your mercy. Yes. Yeah. God, um, this ongoing sense uh, beyond our country for Ukraine and um, Elizabeth, who is joining us today, speaks her prayer uh, for all the ways of a tangled mess of ache and hardship and power gone wild and um, for compassion, uh, for politics, for leadership, for the dailiness of life uh, that is happening through the lives of people and families for this sense of gathering your people in faith and trust that you are there in this time of exile for them. Uh, God, we're mindful of that. We pray for that specifically today. God, in your mercy. Kristen. Pray for the first uh, few weeks of a new feeding ministry at uh, Northport Elementary. Mm. We've transitioned to a new um, type of, or new way of feeding kids and families. Um, and I would just like to pray for um, the growth of that program, the nourishment that it provides, um, and the ways in which we can, we can continually bless and be blessed by our partnership. Uh, for Kristen's prayer, uh, Northport Elementary, 
uh, part of the Robbinsdale School District, and we are a part of a feeding ministry um, and starting with a new organization every meal. So um, as that is uh, this interruption of nourishment um, in the dailiness of of learning and education. And God, we just pray for that to continue to grow, for us to be changed in the midst of all of that. We pray, God, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. All right, dear friends online, um, I am looking for your prayers, giving thanks for your conversation online, and prayers of thanks for the continued healing of my dad, Kurt. He will be released from transitional care on Tuesday. Hooray! Returning to his apartment at Silver Creek, praying he will continue to receive strength and remain healthy. And we join you in that prayer. Um, Kurt, if you're listening, and if he's not, please extend um, our greetings. Uh, we celebrate the inch-by-inch inch dailiness of Kurt's healing and can't wait to see him again. Um, glad to know of his return home in the midst for all the ways that um, he is being cared for and his presence in the midst of all of that. We're so grateful. And Anne, for you and your family as well, as you love and care for your dad so well. God, in your mercy. Into your hands, God, into your heart, we entrust these prayers that they have been heard and call us to come close in the midst as well. Amen. I'm going to hand off announcements to my wonderful colleague, Angela. Hi, friends. If you haven't had a chance, the new question on the windows says, where does it hurt? So we invite you to take those markers and kids, you can draw a picture or you can write words up there. Please do that. Um, next Sunday, the 9th, we're going to have a new member brunch at 10 a.m. here in the fireside room. So you, if you are new or maybe you'd like to pretend you're new to have a good brunch, come on over and get a chance to talk with the pastors and learn more about Mount Olivet. Um, talking about interruptions, here's an interruption for your day. This evening at 7 p.m., we invite you to come back here to this space for a, ceiling, a service of healing and prayer. There's going to be beautiful music uh, with Blake and Susan Scott on viola, and Pastor Beth will be here. We'll have an anointing with oil. Just a beautiful time to rest and be together. So I do invite you to come back. And with that, let us stand and sing. <laughs>
May God grant you the courage to speak truth, the wisdom to listen, the strength to ask for help, and the resiliency to choose love. Go in peace. God is with you.